Oh, I missed it. I missed it. Um, so, hey, I'm in overalls today. Look at that. It's so cold oh. here in overalls. Uh, and, and part of that is because I'm going to go over all. No, I'm not. Uh, we're going to cover all. No, we're not going to cover all. Uh, anyway, we're going to go over some things. And uh, it should be good. Margaret and I were, were chatting uh, about what we're about to cover today. And, and I'm going to say this every single time you guys see me. Um, we don't want to overdo it because we know the transition in and of itself is hard. And then as Lynette um, said with some sarcasm, because I think that's kind of how she operates. She's like, it's going to learn about some more tools. <laughs> uh, it can be a lot. We totally get it. And the worst way to train someone is to say, Hey, here's the whole toolbox. Now go build the house. Ha ha. And so we're trying to just sort of parse this out so that it makes some sense. Um, then you add in the fact that some of you are brand new to the industry. Some of you are brand new to CB. Some of you are, have been around forever. Some of you are just in and have just don't care about any. So like we know there's a whole range of, of people and stuff. Justin, no smile at all there. Just itch in your hand like, I can't see this guy. Okay. Um, so here's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, and, and if this differs from what was on the calendar, uh, we apologize. But sometimes we're like, no, this is probably what we should talk about, even though we came up with something a week ago. All right. So you're going to hear about three things today. Um, so here are the three things. The three things are, uh, we're going to talk about listings because you guys are listing monsters and I know 90% of you know how to do them really, really well. And I just want to make sure on this recording and in the office, everybody sort of hears our slant on how to make your listings the best possible things in your market. Um, we are then going to uh, pivot, which is like the buzzword of 2019. I think we're going to pivot to Shawnee, who's going to talk about agent branding. And those of you like Lynette, who uh, frequent uh, filer know all about agent branding. She's got a, a very hot iron rod in the fire and, and it's going to be, we're going to brand you with that. And then Margaret is going to talk about the various pages that of uh, online stuff that live out there for your benefit, whether it's the Facebook inside uh, track, YouTube inside track and other things, uh, the wants and needs page that you all need to maybe visit every day or every other day, just because that's where a lot of information is stored. So the best thing about today is that I'm only going to talk for about 20 minutes. And the second best thing is, is that it's, it's more informational unless here's how you do things. Cause that gets really complicated sometimes. So um, any questions before we jump into uh, uh, listings? Nothing yet. Excellent. Okay, uh, just remember that if you ever use this Zoom platform, it's great, but uh, be thinking about volume behind you because it picks up everything. Uh, if there's two computers in the same room that are on, it's like a Jimi Hendrix concert all of a sudden, so be careful of that. And when you are recording, everything you do uh, lives forever, so be careful of what you're doing with your hands and uh, how you're uh, dressed and all of that kind of stuff. Okay, so we are going to get going, and if I... There's no picking on anyone today, but I've I found a couple listings in IQO that I uh, the Twin Falls office that I I wanted to go over, and then I'll probably ask for a couple more of you to say, hey, look at my listing, let's go through that. But here's here's the premise of what the next 30 minutes is going to look like. When you bring a listing on into the MLS, and that's where you enter everything, um, it's that's your first impression, right? That's the moment when all the other realtors out there go, oh my God. Lynette just brought on this. I got to, I want to see what it is. In other words, it's the first impression that you make when you're walking up to someone at the bar, you've got to make a good first impression. And if you don't, you've lost that opportunity and yeah, you can get it back, but it's really hard because agents are looking at things. And if there's two pictures or if the pictures are wacky, you might be done. They might've seen the address and go, Oh my God, that might be perfect for my buyer. They click on the new listing link and it's got two photos or the photos are wacky or the ad copy is crap with a bunch of errors. They are not sending that on to their client. They're going to write that off. And when they do that, they write you off a little bit. Okay. I used to tell my students like every error you make on a paper reduces the, the esteem that the reader has for you, the author fair or not. doesn't matter. Every error in your listing just takes you down a notch. 
and I'm not trying to sound like a total scold here or anything, but I'm just trying to say that we, we really want to make sure that all the listings we bring on as much as possible, dazzle, sizzle, pop, shout are the uh, epitome of what happens in Twin Falls real estate, okay? Now I'm gonna walk through some things and then I'm gonna tighten up a document I made a year or so ago that um, has all this stuff in writing. For so, so for those of you that don't wanna take notes or whatever, you'll get this in written form. And all I'm doing is providing sort of a guidepost of what um, we think the best presentation of a listing is. Doesn't mean you have to abide by it all the time, um, but uh, this is uh, how we're gonna go into it. Okay, so you've brought on a listing, you've gotten the marketing package that we talked about last week, you've gotten the photos, you didn't bring on your listing with just one photo because that's the bad impression with the spinach in your teeth and the stuff coming out of your ear and hey, you wanna go out? No, no one's gonna go out with you. So you've got the photos in the MLS, You've got the ad copy in there, and now we're going to talk about what that should really look like, okay? All right, so I'm going to share my screen, and please, anyone just stop me and, and ask a question if I'm going the wrong direction or if I'm totally different than your thoughts and, and opinions, totally fine, okay? All right, so I don't want to do that. I want to go here. Okay, um, IQO, and, I, and boy, help me on this, Tori. Are, are agents using IQO yet, or is this? No. Be, no, Okay. So pretend we're in your MLS, okay? Because anything that happens with your listings is done in your MLS. At some point, your MLS will feed, well, it does now, into our IQO. So I can see all of Twin Falls listings. I can see all of our entire company's listings. And what I do from time to time is go do uh, some, some quality uh, control. And so that's what we're kind of going to look at here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this just so you get a better idea of like, Here's all of Twin Falls' listings, and this is by price. I can order them by price, and so um, we've got, whoops, I didn't mean to push that, so give me a second. So Tad has a $29 million, um, I don't know, shack or something, I guess. Uh, so that's at the top of the list here. Um, and this is just your MLS that I'm searching, just the Intermountain MLS. Great. So I'm going to look at two listings to start this, and I think they're both pretty good examples of what we would be looking for uh, in how a listing is presented. The first one is Kitty. Kitty, are you in the in the house, so to speak? No? Okay, so she's got a, a, a listing here at uh, 614A River Road, and it's for nine ninety nine five. So it's a good listing. Uh, we're going to look at it. I might make it global luxury. We'll see. But anyway, I'm going to click on this. And what I really want to go over is how I think the photos should um, be presented. And then we're going to look at your ad copy and any of the details. Okay. I'm not going to show you a whole lot of functionality of what you can do from this details page, like grab your video tour. This listing lives on YouTube right there. You can go in here, grab that link, send it to your seller, send it to a buyer, send it to another agent so that they get a video tour. It's basically the photos and a slideshow, but at least it's got music and, and uh, video to it. Um, but anyway, um, we're going to look at how this um, property is laid out. Okay. So this is on uh, my, so this shows up as me, as you can see, because um, Oh, that. Okay, so go down a little bit here. All right, great first lead photo, okay? I really strongly encourage you to lead with the best exterior photo. Um, if, if possible, you have a seasonal appropriate one. That's not always possible because you get your photos done once and you're not gonna spend 150 bucks for a, a photo with snow on it, I get that. But if possible, it's seasonally appropriate. Um, this is nicely done. It's got the light in the right place, uh, right? The front of the home is lit and it's got a little bit of back backdrop to it. So uh, I think this is a pretty good. Sometimes this is a crapshoot because you bring on a, a property in November and you're not gonna get green, you're not gonna get white, you're gonna get this gray brown nothing you can do about it but you want to lead with your strongest exterior photo here's here's an issue that I think a lot of agents um, fall uh, victim to which is they get four or five exteriors for in their in their photo package and they put them all there right in a row to lead us off and I'm going to tell you something that my experience as a marketer for other companies and and doing this stuff is that a viewer, whether it's an agent or a buyer out there, needs one or two exteriors before you get in the house. If you're doing three or four exteriors at the front of your roll, they better be awesome, awesome blossom. 
but people can see the exterior when they go by. They want to know what the inside is. So unless it's amazing, don't do more than two exteriors uh, at the front end of your roll. And please don't do this angle and then five feet to the, to the right, another angle that's almost the same. We want to eliminate duplicates. Um, a good rule of thumb here is that less is more. You don't need to show every single moment of the house because it's just like, uh, well, it's just like anything. The more you know, sometimes you don't feel like you need to pick up the phone then and call the agent, right? So we're going to be thoughtful about that. So we're going to see what Kitty has next. So here we head into the inside. Um, my thought on, on the way these photos should be ordered is you do the nice exterior and then you do the big rooms that people spend their time in next. You go from the exterior. We don't worry about the entry unless, of course, it's amazing because the entry is sort of a in-between place. I say exterior, big living room shot, dining room shot, kitchen shots, master bedroom and bath shots because those are the places that people are going to spend the most time and they want to see right off the bat. Those places speak the loudest about does this home fit me? An entryway often doesn't, and entries are really hard to photograph anyway, so we want to move from the exterior to a beautiful interior, usually of the living room or the great room, whatever you want to call it. Now, Kitty goes from the exterior to the kitchen. It's a nice shot here. Great, but it, it's a little discontinuous, if, if you know what I mean. Um, you're not trying to tell an exact story, walk in the door, entryway, then closet, then blah, blah, but I think that it makes sense for the viewer to be taken to the great room right off the bat, the living room. Okay, so here we are with our second kitchen shot. Um, and then a dining nookish area in the kitchen. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with these photos. It's, it's totally fine, but I'm hoping that the living room, okay, this is a bigger space. I say do the bigger spaces first. So this one, you know, might come before the kitchen. Here's a great room shot that uh, captures a little bit of it. And then we're in the master, uh, master, good. So, and then the master bath, excellent. Uh, did you see something here? You all know, I think that, um, oh, I guess that's the wall. I was gonna say this is a vertical shot. Really encourage your photographers not to take any vertical shots because they just don't work well in real estate. You probably all know that. Um, encourage your photographers. This is good, the toilet seat should always be down. Total pet peeve of mine. The last thing I wanna do is be reminded that toilets are exist much less that the lids aren't down. And then if you can, if you're there, please, um, well, what should I say? Get rid of the toilet paper. Food, okay. Um, this looks like a guest bedroom, fine. Um, now I'm a little lost. So here's the issue. And Kitty, I, this is not about Kitty at all. This is just about listings and the way they should run. You don't want a viewer to go, wait, where am I? You want a viewer to feel like there's a flow. That's why exterior, living room, dining room, kitchen, master, master bath, guest bedrooms, guest baths, and then, you know, get us back outside or give us a deck shot. So this is great. We're now we're outside. Uh, we've got a couple of things. We don't need to see everything in the exteriors. In fact, if there are sheds or hoses and everything, like leave them alone. This is good, like this. Um, this is good, especially if it has a description with it, um, which it doesn't look like it does, but that's okay. Um, this is nice. So here we are in the exteriors. This may or may not be there. Like I, you don't want a, you don't want a viewer to go, oh, ugh. like don't give the viewer a chance to not love your property. And I'm not saying hide the truth or anything, but I don't know. This, this is a yes, maybe no. I don't know. I'd probably wouldn't use this in my listing present uh, role of photos. Now we're back to another view shot, so I'm a little bit um, disoriented again. So try to keep things in a little bit of a, a storyline, a narrative here. Okay. That looks like the house again. Okay, and then now we're back at the, uh, at the front. Okay, so Kitty, I, this isn't about Kitty. This is a, a great listing. I'm, I'm hoping that she's got a lot of activity on it. I think there's a couple places that we could tighten up the order of the photos and make sure that um, they tell a, a, a cleaner story. Um, and, and sometimes it's up to the photos you get, right? Sometimes you're gonna be, you just have to punt. Uh, but 
couple things from that one that we just looked at. Don't feel compelled to use everything. And think about how to move from a nice exterior into the big areas that everybody wants to see first. Okay, detail shots can come later. Entry, laundry, powder room, those can all come at the end of your interior list uh, roll of photos. They don't have to be like, okay, after the living room, then there's a powder room. Don't, don't waste our time with that. Give us the big, beautiful stuff first, then put the smaller interiors at the end of the interior roll, and then leave us with two or three awesome exteriors and get out of there. Just get out. What's the whole job of, what, what's the whole purpose of, of having these things online? It's so someone goes, I love the look of that. I want to know more. Do, 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 do. Hey, Casey, I, can I see this? Because I, I want to know more about it. If you show everything, that actually decreases the, the chances that someone's going to want to feel like they need to know more. Right? So, again, you're not hiding the truth, but on a first date, uh, I'm not going to tell someone about my, um, the rash in my armpit. I'm just not going to do that. They can find out about that on the third or fourth date. Uh, if I'm lucky enough to get there. But the first date doesn't need to have every single thing about me. Okay? It's a relationship you, your listing, are building with the buyer or the other agent. Let it develop a little bit. Have some mystery in it. And you're going to see uh, some more dances happening, I think. I'm really stretching these metaphors, I know. Okay. All right. Hey, Derek. Yes. Can I just add something? You sure. Just I'm, I'm just going to be on Kitty's side for a minute. Of course. Um, Kitty didn't actually load those photos. So that's, that was probably office staff. Great. Um, the, in the order, the way they are right now. So, yeah. And we can go in and move them around. Totally. And, you know, look, we're just here as a, as a group. Uh, we're all in the same company. We're all like, I, right. that was a very good presentation. And, and I don't want anyone to feel like I'm, you know, talking down about Kitty or the off staff or whatever. Um, but what I really want us all to do is sort of, doesn't mean we're all robots and we all do it exactly the same, but there should be a, a method to how we present these things so that we are making the best presentation possible. And all those other agents out there go, wow, that, that CB office has it together. Um, so if you've got someone entering your photos for you, and a lot of you do, uh, Tori, is that a, is that a, does everybody get their we photos do. entered for them in Twin Falls? Okay. Yes. Great. Um, I would say make sure, especially on bigger listings, right, that need a little bit more attention, that, that you give whoever's entering your photos a little bit of a, here's what I'm, here's what I'm thinking for the order, right? Have some ownership over that so that um, you, have, you have some say over what they look like. Okay. Great. We're going to go back to that, and we're going to look at the ad copy really quick. This is all pulled directly from the MLS, so whatever's in the MLS is um, put into here, okay? So description. I can tell this is already good. Step back a bit in time to when homes were built to last. I love that opening sentence. Um, you're trying to tell a story in your ad copy. You're trying to not just be nuts and bolts, and some of your, it depends on your personality, of course, but you are trying to paint a picture that goes beyond what they see in the photos because everybody sees the photos first and the ad copy comes second. So the ad copy's job is to amplify and it is to add color and it is to add um, personality to the photos. Okay. So Kitty, whoever wrote this awesome, awesome job, step back a bit in time to when homes were built to last. Already I've got a good feeling about this home from the ad copy. Okay, property was developed to raise animals and there was a sense of true privacy and you have described this 14 acre offering. Great. 3,000 square foot log home with large windows looking down on Hagerman Valley and Snake River is enhanced with a serious cook's kitchen. Master bath and kitchen floors are heated. Downstairs rooms have lots of light and doors to patio. Above the three bay garage is a guest home rental, RV storage, three stall with tack room. Okay, very good. It's, it's got a nice mixture, I think, of um, story, as well as facts. And that's what you should be aiming at there is, is a mixture of story and facts. You want someone though, you think about this, think about two things when you're writing your ad copy. Because ad copy is a, a, a total bugaboo, I get it. No one likes writing ad copy. So do it, here, here's a secret for you. Speak your ad copy before you try to write it. Pretend you are at the home with a brand new uh, buyer, 
and they don't, they don't know anything. And you're just going to give them the story about this home before you go in. If you speak that aloud, we, we do a much better job speaking than we do writing. That's just human nature, right? We were oral first and then we came up with it. So this is the easy thing to do. When I'm talking about my listing, I can talk for 20 minutes about 614A River Road. Ask me to write four sentences, right? Because something happens to our brains when we're asked to write. So speak it. And if you've got a significant other or a kid or someone in your office that can um, type as you go or just take the notes, I guarantee you your ad copy is going to be more animated. It's going to dazzle and sizzle a little bit more because it is the spoken word and not the written word. Very big difference, okay? If you don't struggle with ad copy, great. But the whole point of ad copy is to, is to amplify and enhance what the photos have already told us, okay? Another secret if you struggle with this is pretend there are no photos. Pretend there is no physical listing and you are trying to make someone enthusiastic to go see this make-believe place. What would you say about it? That's why Kitty's first line is so good because instantly I'm like with Margaret Mitchell in, you know, the pre pre-war South step back in time to when houses were built to last. Okay. I'm, I'm with you. I'm on a story with you and I want to know more about this home. So that was an excellent job. Now we get into the details. Great. Excellent. Um, Okay, any thoughts or comments about ad copy, things that work for you or stuff that you think should not be an ad copy from anyone? Excellent, okay, good. I'm glad I have all the answers. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, we're gonna look at one more really quickly. Uh, Victoria has a, a really nice listing, I think on 41, 05 Hilda or something like that. So let me share my screen um, one more time. And I'm going to close this. I'm struggling to manipulate this here. Okay. Um, so close and Victoria, where is hers? There it is. 40, 4105 Hidden, Hidden Lake. Okay. Uh, Victoria, are you in the room? Nope. So we're going to take a look at this. Um, this is a, a really another nice listing. Um, so let's look at the ad copy first since we did the, the photos first last time. Okay. Um, let's just see if, if the, the ad copy carries the weight that the photo that we wouldn't even need the photos. Like if you can write ad copy where the photos are superfluous, you are awesome. Okay. Remodeled and beautiful exclamation marks. Mm -hmm. That's got voice, that's got passion. You wanna to try to convey to the people out there on the worldwide interweb net uh, that um, you, are, you are a real person, that you have passions, that you have opinions. Sometimes exclamation marks can do that, not always. Um, but don't be afraid to make it sound like you. You're trying to generate enthusiasm for this two-dimensional bunch of photos and letters, okay? So remodeled and beautiful. Uh, million dollar views of Deerkey's Lakes and the Canyon. Massive redone deck on back of home makes this home perfect for lots of entertaining. Okay, some great words already in that. Uh, beautiful with the exclamation marks. Million dollar views. I like that. Massive. That's good because that conveys that it's just really, really, it's too big for words almost. Um, and then entertaining at the front end. So she's told me a story. She's given me the sense that if I live here, it's a big experience. It's massive, it's million dollar, it's entertaining, it's beautiful, I've got views. Even if those were the only two sentences in the ad, three sentences in the ad copy, I'd, I'd wanna know more, okay? New cabinets and countertops. Master bathroom has been remodeled with pro marble, walk-in shower and double vanities. Real wood floors in most of the home. Three fireplaces, uh, Arca stone mantle and surround rock walls and accents on inside of home bar area with fridge so many wonderful features inside and out that make this home a dream home okay really really well done here Victoria if you're watching this nice job pat yourself on the back here are a couple of things that I think um, ad copy should uh, adhere to um, try to use 
you're telling a story. Uh, and I just said, use your speaking voice and it's going to help. But then try to be grammatically correct as much as possible. We've got a couple of non-sentences here. Not a huge deal, but you are trying, especially with these higher ed homes, you're trying to attract a more affluent buyer who is going to care about grammar and, and things like that to some degree. Um, keep your punctu or your capitalization consistent. We've got a capital C here for cabinets We've got and countertops. Um, if you're going to do that, make sure you sort of have a, a, a consistency to it. Um, most nouns don't need to be capitalized. Um, but all I'm trying to say is that you want your ad copy to be clean and easy to read. And we are used to, since we learned how to read at a very young age, we are used to reading complete sentences with very consistent capitalization and punctuation. Okay, so there's a, there's a couple things that if, if I were going to have Victoria here, I'd say, okay, I would tighten this up. I would, I would make sure that my capitalization is consistent. And you're thinking, dude, what, what is wrong with you? This is not a big deal. This is just ad copy. And I get it. It is. But this is a beautiful home. And I don't want anyone to look at this home and read my ad copy and, and have it diminish in any way because my ad copy has maybe errors in it or is, doesn't seem like I paid attention to how I wrote it. So that's why I think it's important to make sure that you're um, being consistent with your ad copy. Okay, let's look at the photos real quick and then I'm about um, done being the, the teacher. I apologize for that. Okay, rule that I talked about last time totally applies here. Great job, Victoria. This is the big money shot. Uh, in fact, the home is so big it doesn't even fit in the frame. That's awesome. If you're working with a photographer, make sure that they, well, make sure they're at the house at, at the right time whenever possible. And in the winter, it isn't always, but you want the front of the house lit. You've got the garage lit and this little alcove or portico, whatever, lit. This is kind of shaded. Um, sometimes nothing you can do about it, but for the, 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 the bigger the price point, the more you want to make sure the house is lit properly. Um, so, but this is a great shot. It shows a big driveway, huge garage with even windows in it. I don't even know if I've ever seen that before. So that's awesome. Next photo. Okay. Uh, I get this looks like what that, that entry. Okay. So uh, again, one or two exteriors. Uh, you don't need to walk me exactly through the house as it would be. Okay, now I assume I'm at the entry looking sort of, uh, what, to the east maybe at the rest of the house. Um, I've already pretty much seen this. Like, I know what this house kind of looks like. It's a brick house spread out, um, you know, vaulted ceilings and that sort of thing. So I want to know what's inside. So that's why I'm saying there's three, here's four. It's a nice shot. There's five. There's six. And then a thought starts running through my mind as the viewer here. So what's up with the insides? Right? So that's why I really think it's important to get inside sooner than later. Um, show me how awesome it is outside, but when I come to your house for a party, I don't walk around the outsides first. I go inside. I want to see your home. I want to see your living room first. I want to see your kitchen and your dining room. Then I'll go look at the deck. Then I'll go look at the view. Okay, so we had about, what, eight, eight or so exteriors. Um, that's what I would advise against. If you want to do eight exteriors, totally, totally you can. I'm just saying this is the practice I've seen have the most success at, at some of the other agencies. I've been at. Beautiful shot here um, of the of the kitchen. So, wow, look at those inside. That was an amazing house. Okay, so those are those are good back to back photos. Um, this isn't a super strong photo. Uh, obviously, pantries and, and little bar areas and closets and entries are hard because usually you have to be vertical. So that's why I say put those things at the end. <clears throat> okay, so I'm a little, I'm a little lost at, at, at how the house is put together right now. And again, that's not a huge deal, but I'm, I'm still waiting to see what? What am I waiting to see right now? Living room. I want to see where the freak my family's going to sit. Where am I going to watch the Super Bowl? No, not there. I'll get my beer there. Okay. All right, so master probably. Um, try not to show 
the closet first when you're doing a bedroom and don't even feel compelled to show closets. Less is more. Okay, maybe this is why the, the living room isn't shown because it's unfurnished. That brings up a really interesting point. What do I do with unfurnished homes? Well, my, my first advice would be if you can afford it, stage it. <laughs> but if not, don't apologize. Like, don't bury this great room photo with these unbelievably beautiful French doors, or maybe they're Castilian. I don't even know my European history. Lynette, you can help me. Don't bury this. This is what I want to see, okay? And if that's, you know, if this is all the living room, great. Now I know where the big family spaces are. But now we've jumped from kitchen to some smaller spaces, to a bedroom, to a living room, to a bedroom, to a great master bath shot. That's beautiful. I have a thing for bathtubs like that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be weird. I just, I think they're great. That's awesome. Another great shot. Like, but do you see, like, the master bath got three shots. And the living room got one, maybe two. I have to make an assumption. Maybe three. So the, the living room got one shot. The master bath got three. And then we're back to the beginning. Okay. All right. So I, I, I hope you can kind of see what I'm trying to get at here. And, and I could probably show 10 more of these. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to cut into uh, Shawnee's time. And please, folks, I know how hard this is. I'm not trying to be like, nah, 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 nah. I just want us to, to really be thoughtful about how we're inputting our photos and make sure that when a, a buyer gets this from their agent, uh, this is agent so-and-so from such and such. And I know you've been looking in the million dollar price range. This home just came on by Victoria. Take a look at it. I want that person to go, Oh my God, beautiful outdoor, big, big open spaces. And look at that kitchen, the master bedroom and bath are awesome. And not be like after four photos, well, it's a bunch of exteriors and then an entry in a closet. I'm going to stop looking. Right? So Think about how you would want someone to learn about your house. You bring them in, you show them the big rooms, you show them the master bedroom. Look at this bath with this view. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Oh, you want to see the powder room? Okay, that's at the end of the tour. And then finish it with a beautiful exclamation mark of an exterior that is going to resonate with them and is going to compel them to call you the listing agent. Okay. So it's like a circle. You start with a great exterior, maybe one more, get me inside to see the big things. Show me the little things if I need to, but don't overdo it. Get me back outside for a couple of view shots and bam, hit me with the thing like, you got to call me because look at this as your last shot. That's what I'm hoping. And we looked at two higher end listings. I totally get that. A lot of listings in Sun Valley, in Twin Falls, in Grand Junction are not. Like you don't even want to have five photos. I get it. But even then we want to always be presenting each of our listings as if they are luxury listings. Okay? They're not, but if we can market them as such, every person that uses you is going to, they're, they're going to want to use you because you do such a good job, no matter the price point. Your $99,000 stinker out on, on whatever road you're going to present that in the best possible way. And it's going to get you more listings. It's going to win you more respect from all of your agents in your office, as well as in the MLS. And your seller is going to be like, wow, that was, I love the order here. Thank you. Cause you're going to send the link to them once it's up You say, here's, here's what it looks like on the MLS and on Zillow, whatever. And then they're, and, and in those first couple of weeks, what are those sellers doing? They're getting calls from, from family and friends. Are you moving? Did something happen? Who's your agent? And that's the time when they're talking about the great freaking job that you did listing and presenting your home. In two months, it's old hat. It's those first couple of weeks that people are talking about the job you have done with that listing. Go back to the bar. It's the first couple of weeks that she or he is most excited about, oh, I met this woman. She was, she's just, ah, right? It's the first couple of weeks. So maximize, capitalize on that time. When you bring your listing into the world, you make a splash. It looks beautiful. It doesn't make anyone go, I don't, I don't get how this house works. It doesn't make anyone ask any questions about this ad copy is confusing or I don't, it's hard to follow. It's, it's tight. And I think this is a big deal uh, because you are only as good as what 
you've got out there on the worldwide internet web. Okay. Because of the job you do, you don't have a store where people come in and see your inventory and your paints are all aligned beautifully and you've got the paint brushes and that's not your job. Your, your inventory lives online and you have to make it look as good as possible because that is your business out there online. Okay. Don't make anyone go, boy, they didn't really pay attention to their inventory. Make them go, this, this agent knows their stuff. They care. Okay. Um, do it however you want, of course, right? <laughs> it, like I just said, it is your business. But in my years at, at Sotheby's, where we had a, a Sotheby's person way in New Jersey with quality control over everything, this is kind of what they taught me in terms of an order and in terms of your ad copy and in terms of types of photos to use, not having toilets up, not having a bunch of cars in the, in the driveway, right? Not having the dog run through the, I mean, dogs are cute, but not having dogs or people or reflections. So really be thoughtful about that. And I appreciate your attention. If you have issues with anything I've said, because like you're totally off, you don't even do real estate. Great. Let's have that conversation. My whole, my whole goal and Tori, I'm so glad you asked the question. My whole goal is if you're thinking about it, then you're already, you're already ahead. If you're thinking about what you're doing with your photos and your ad copy, you are way ahead of most other agents. So that's the good thing. Okay. All right, Shawnee. Now that I've totally been a wet blanket, I'm going to hand it over to the one, the only, the inimitable Shawnee Carver, who's going to talk to you about agent branding and what we can do to make not your listings dazzle, but you stand out from everybody else. Right. Thanks, Phoenix. Yeah. Oh, good job. Okay. Oh, thanks. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. All right. Hello. So another one of our um, branding or our packages that we do in our marketing department is our agent branding package. We talked a little bit about this last week at our meeting and we do have some flyers on hand for you guys. So I'm going to go through um, kind of what it is, why we created it and how you guys can order it. The marketing packages um, are all designed for a different outlook. One, you've got your listing packages that are designed to promote your listing. The agent branding package is designed to promote you as the agent. So if you're just getting started out or if you want to rebrand your look or your name, this is something that you guys would want to go take a look at. Um, it's your name, your logo, your brand. So we designed these just to kind of promote you guys as individuals and then that you are also with Codal Banker. So I'm going to go through and we've got two different levels of um, packages that you can order. I'm going to share my screen. And if I can get a thumbs up when you can see it. Okay. Uh, so our introductory package is $200. This is what the agent cost is to you. What that package is going to include is a personal logo design. So you will work specifically in-house with our graphic designer here. And with that logo design, we can also get you some personalized business cards. It also is going to include a half an hour of social media training. This is going to be a kind of a way that you can get your logo out there, a way that you can promote it on social media, um, regardless if you've got listings or buyers. It just kind of gets your name out there and to ramp up that business for you guys. The premier package is $300. It's going to also include the personal logo design, personalized business cards with the logo on it. We're going to do a five-day five Facebook-sponsored ad. These are the demographics that you want to target, whether it's first-time home buyers, investors, um, a, a specific zip code, a specific age range of income level. So you guys can give us those criteria. We can go in and then design an ad and run it for you and give you all the analytics after that ad is finished running as well. And then anything that we do just with the marketing package as well, everything is going to link back to your own personal website. So any kind of tracking or anything that we do is always going to link back to you as the agent. But that's also going to include a one hour of social media training, Facebook and Instagram. We believe that the power of social media can take your business to many different levels. And so it's a good idea that we can kind of give you best practices, how to get your Facebook set up if you're new to the social media world, how to link those pages together, and just kind of your the best type of posting schedule that you can follow as well. Any questions on those first two packages before I go into the add-ons? No? Okay. Uh, there are a couple different added items that you can get. There's magnetic business cards. There's a large personal postcard, the trifold about me brochure, and the door hangers. So there's the quantity and the prices of those. 
And then again, all of these pieces are going to be designed for you to promote you as the agent. They could be um, your accomplishments. You could talk about your family. You could talk about your involvement in the community. You could talk about, you know, recent sales. So anything that you kind of want to promote about yourself, this is kind of your, your piece to brag on you and your accomplishments. Show you a couple of different designs that we've done uh, for the business card. We will design front and back for you. We did use Shannon as an example here, so I just want to let you know too and reiterate that anything that we do um, for real estate will definitely still go with our Coldwell Banker industry standards. So it will still have Coldwell Banker's logo on there. It will still have the requirements that we have to use for as a brand, but it will also have your contact information and your specific logo on there as well. So Shannon didn't have that. I just wanted to make sure to, to clarify that too. This is a large postcard that we did for the Renover Group in um, Montana. So it kind of gives you, you know, the design capabilities and you guys get to provide the content for what it is and we put it all together for you and execute it and send it out on your behalf. You can send it out to a radius list again or you can have it bulk shipped to your office and you guys can hand it out um, as you desire. This is, would be the trifold. So it's got front and back. Um, it's got the logo on it, it's got our Coldwell Banger logo on it, and the disclaimer message that we put on all of our marketing material. And then you guys give us the content, we will come up with the design for it. So you can have it about me, you can have, like I was saying, your family, your accomplishments. Um, this is going to be a standard 5x5 five five trifold that you can add on to these marketing or to these agent branding packages. I think I should leave it there for a second. I should point out, everybody, that um, Jeff here used to have the best hair in the company. Um, but now that Gary uh, is in the company, Gary has better hair than Jeff, we've all decided. Jeff has been miserable the last few weeks ever since Gary joined us because Jeff really prides himself on his hair. So, Gary, nice job. Um, and just, you know, keep, keep styling. <laughs> I don't know. Jeff's got some great hair and so does his wife. So that's a close, a close competition there. Yeah, it was a close vote. It was a close vote. There's no doubt. I think it was eight Very to five. Close. Gary. <laughs> so, um, and then the, the logo design. We'll work with you on the logo design. Um, like I said, we've got somebody in-house that does this. So we will limit the revision so that you guys can go back and forth. We want you to come with us with kind of the color scheme that you're thinking and the idea of it beforehand. And that way we can come and get it close enough to the idea of what you want and then work on those revisions. It's something that can go back and forth a couple of times. We don't want it to take up a lot of um, our time and or yours. We want to get you the product delivered and let you guys start using it. Hey, Shawnee. Yes. I have a question. Can you go back to the first um, where it had, no, no, no. Oh. One more, that. Can you scroll down a little bit so we could, okay. So their logo, compared to the Coldwell Banker. Mm -hmm. So here we are required that the Coldwell Banker logo has to be at least the same size as a, okay, so you know that. It does, yes, absolutely. Okay. It has to be the same size or larger. It can't, their, their right. personal logo cannot be, yeah, and this one, the, the Renover Group has bigger, and then their logo is a little bit bigger as well on top. So, yes, we right. will follow the industry standards where it has to be, and we won't make any modifications to the Coldwell Baker Canyon side logo. So the standard okay. logo that you guys use will still have to be on all of the material. Okay. That, yes, can, for sure. I, I had a question about our logo, too. Um, your distinctive properties logo looks so nice, and it seems to be, like, in a really nice – I don't know, PNG format, and ours is so clunky compared to that. And so it, you know, I saw, um, I saw that Justin Winston's um, uh, email footer came through, and then it has this kind of ugly giant Coldwell Banker in a white, Coldwell Banker came inside Realty in a white box. And so it makes it really difficult to use that cleanly with our marketing. Are we able to, or are you able to fix that so it looks like the distinctive properties, but Says yeah, we'll, work with, we'll work with Gary and Beverly to get a format of the, the one that you guys have and if we can clean it up and just make it um, nice, but we'll still want to use exactly what they provided. But yes, we could definitely work with them um, and getting that cleaned up for you guys. Okay, perfect. 
Um, any other questions on the material or what they kind of include? Can you go back to the uh, a la carte menu for a second? I want to ask a question. Um, so yeah. could I just jump to the a la carte without doing yeah. the intro or the premiere? Nope, it's got to, you got to order it with a package. I mean, yeah. yes. So in the agent branding packages, any of these items can be as add-ons, but you do have to order one of the primary packages first. Great. Hey, how many, how many agents are in your MLS Twin Falls? Like 444, 444 I think. 444? No, in, in our yeah. association, it's got to be closer to 500, but in our MLS, it's over 6,000. Okay. okay. Um, someone's, someone's got, got two speakers, speakers going. going. So, so there we go. Um, I just here's here's why I asked the question. Yes, it is a leading question, Your Honor. Um, like, there's a lot of people out there, all trying to do the same thing that you all are trying to do, which is buy help people buy and sell real estate. <clears throat> and there's a lot of people that are really good out there, including all of you in this room, and uh, Gary. And so. One of the ways that you need to distinguish yourself is by saying, here's my identity, right? Uh, more and more, we are an identity-based culture that, and, and logos and brands resonate with us. That's why we're with Coal Banker, because it's a brand that if, you're, if someone's from Baltimore or someone's from uh, Caracas visiting Sun Valley, they know the Coal Banker brand. So you've got the Coal Banker brand here, but it's really important that you figure out a way to brand yourself amongst the five or 600 other agents that you are competing with. Um, the main way to do that, of course, is by being a great agent and just doing great work and making phone calls. I get that. But from an exposure standpoint, if you can just differentiate yourself by having a sophisticated, a catchy, a memorable, a beautiful logo, that is going to, um, I wouldn't call it a game changer, but it's definitely going to elevate you as an agent in your market. So I know 200 bucks, big deal, 300 bucks, even bigger deal, but this is a, this is a long-term investment, right? It's not $200 every time you want to use your logo. It's $200. And in the open market, you could pay five, six. I mean, that $400 is low to me. You can pay a lot of money to have this done. We'll do it for you with your input. And then you've got a brand that you can say, this is me. And that's pretty cool. I think. Absolutely. Thanks, Steve. Um, so the order form for the agent branding packages lives in IQ Office. Up in the top right corner on the Quick Link tab again, you'll drop down and it's going to be called the agent order form or agent branding order form. This one you're going to find there's a lot less information that we need to get the order started because this is going to be more of a consultation um, once we've received notification of the order. So we're asking for your email address, your name, which package you would like to order, if you would like to order any additional add-ons, and then which office you belong to. Once we receive the notification in our marketing department, um, Sierra will be reaching out to you guys to kind of get the ideas of what you're looking at. What color do you like? What kind of theme do you like? What are some ideas, you know, samples of what, what have you liked? What do you kind of want it to look like? So in between, you know, you'll have your first introductory meeting with her, and then she'll start working on your logo for you. Um, the logo design will include up to two revisions, so we want to make sure that you get kind of all of those basics taken care of at that first introductory meeting, and then you guys have the option to go back and forth and make a couple different edits to it. Simple, it's got it down on the bottom of what's included in each package. Submit your order, and we will, on the other end, will get notified of that. Okay. If, if I want to order an a la carte later, can I do that? I don't have to do it now, right? Yes. You can. If you get it in and you're thinking, gosh, you know what, I really want some door hangers and I've already taken care of my, you know, introductory order. Yes, you can come in and you can order door hangers. We can put that logo on them. You can go knock door to door and, you know, have it about you, you know, card on there. So, yes, that's something that we could help you with. Great. Do any, do any of your agents or any of you sitting in the room have your own logo right now that you've um, developed and used as part of your uh, arsenal? Gary, you do? Yes, Beverly had that design a couple of years ago. Yeah, and 
So, and I know you guys do a, a decent amount of business. So um, it's not all about the logo, but Beverly or Gary, one of you want to speak to what uh, having a logo does for you or how it differentiates you or, or what have you? Well, I don't know if Beverly can talk on there or not, but I, I feel that it's an additional thing that shows that you're in business and setting a standard that of professionalism. I mean, it's, had a lot of comments on it that it's that they like the logo and you know, people are like oh I like your logo but uh, we're, we're starting to see that out in the market a little more too we're starting to see a couple other agents from other brands in our market space that are getting logos made so. yeah the last thing an agent wants to do in 2019 is be like oh shoot I wish I would have done that because look at all the people that are doing that, whether we're talking about video, whether we're talking about agent branding, whether we're talking about uh, Matterports, like be at the front end of these things um, because others are going to start doing it. And isn't it great to be a trendsetter? I mean, I asked Gary and, and Beverly and, and Michaela, they're setting trends and people are having to play catch up. Be the leader, not the catch up. -er. Can I just say that um, when, we, when we did our logo years ago, it was nice because it, it um, separated us and it showed that we were a team, but also then I saw other people doing logos and, and um, branding themselves. And some of their logos were so big that it took, um, it was just kind of an overwhelming look. And then everyone had to wonder what brokerage they were with or, and it was just kind of this big picture of something. And then they have to look for where they really at and, and get how to find them. So just make sure your logos are not so, so bright and overpowering that it muddles that you're a real estate agent with Coldwell Banker. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. IREX has, has rules um, different than Coldwell Banker. So we have to find a happy middle ground, but IREX rules are that there can be no confusion of who you work for in your logo. Like there can't be any attempt at deception or misleading and have your logo like Beverly saying so big and then like you've got to you've got to make clear what brokerage you work for otherwise uh, you're you're in violation of IREC rules. Yep, absolutely. And when you um, so if you do the agent branding package and then you go in and you order a CB one two three on some of that material that we do in house, whether it's the e postcard or the different types, of, you can put that logo on there. Like we said, as long as we're following the um, standard, and we got the Codal Banker logo on there as well. Okay. Any questions on any of the agent branding packages? We're gonna get some samples sent up to you guys. I know we passed a few out at the meeting last week, um, but I'll get some more sent up to you and Tori will have those in our office. Um, if you guys have any questions at any time, please feel free to reach out. And I am actually gonna turn it over to Margaret now so she can talk about her. Oh. Yeah, you know, it's been 38 seconds since I spoke. So I just wanna say like with Shawnee and, and with me, <laughs> like as we're going over this information, any any questions you don't feel like you have to jump in the pool without knowing how much chlorine is in it right so like anything you want to know give shawnee a call give me a call about the listing stuff i just talked about if you want me to look at a listing you just brought on i'd be happy to uh if you want to just ask shawnee what am i really going to get 200 dollars worth like make the call and don't feel like you have to um just go all in but we're here to just listen to you and and try to make everything we do better um, by listening to you and helping guide you through all of these different things. So please don't hesitate. Yep. That doesn't go for everybody, Justin, but most people. <laughs> oh, he's gone. Good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Do you, do you need to pull the yeah, up on him? Go right. <clears throat> Are we still shared? Yes. Hi guys, <clears throat> while we're pulling this up, I'll talk. Thank you for all who have accepted my friend request on Facebook. I've gotten you in all these groups we're gonna talk about. If you haven't received a friend request from me or if you haven't accepted my friend request, if you would please accept it, I can get you in these groups. Uh, Oh. 
Okay, so we have the first one we're going to talk about is the realistic um, user group. Somewhere. Mm, shortening and oil. Oh, sorry. Uh, what, what were we looking at, Derek? I didn't even look. I don't know, but it sure made my gut hurt for a second. Oh, okay. On, on IQ Office, they have a lot of information in here. There are training videos in here. There's all kinds of up-to-date current information for you to learn IQ Office. If you have questions, this is a great place to go and ask. And not only Lyle and his wife will help you, but there are other users that will pop in and help you with whatever you need to know. Every Monday morning from 9 to 10, they have a video on here, a training video. And if you have time on Monday mornings, you learn a lot by going in and watching this video that they have every week. Um, and then they post it. So if you can't watch it Monday morning, you can go through. Kelsey did a video today to show this gentleman, or Kelsey did it to show Vic how to do something. So periodically, you're going to find videos in here that are really, really important. And they're very, they're up to date. The videos that they've got in IQ Office are not quite as up to date as these. These are now. So IQ Office is a really great place to learn about the systems, to learn about the program, and learn how to use it. Um, the next one we're going to go to, I don't want to do that, is your wants and needs page. Uh, if I could type it would help. Your wants and needs page is there for you. You can communicate with each other saying, hey, I need help with open houses. I need somebody to help me with my floor time. I've got an appointment and I can't keep my floor time. That type of thing. Or if you've got coming soons. In Colorado, we can't put coming soons out for the general public. But because this is a closed group, you can communicate with each other and say, hey, guys, I'm listing this million dollar property. And it's not going to be on the market long. We need to, if you want to show it, this is the information. So you can get your coming soon's up so your office can know all about them. It's, it's a great way to communicate between all of you and your office. And then there are a few of us who will see it too. But you're going to have all that information that you need in your office. The next one is the Coldwell Banker Inside Track. And you'll notice that Todd posted today, some of you guys are not getting the daily distinctive. I will go in and check the emails. I found a few of the emails that have varied while I was doing the signature blocks. So I'll go in and check those emails to make sure that everything is right in there to make sure that you can then start to get the the daily distinctive. It's usually here about nine o'clock every morning. So if you don't get it, there is a problem. Scroll down um, a bit. The other scroll down okay. a bit and show some of this. Yeah, this this is okay. this is a really important page, folks. And um, I don't want anyone to be glued to Facebook because that means you're not doing real estate. But this is all the company stuff. Todd's videos, Shannon's videos, my videos. Uh, Gary and and Beverly will be doing videos. So this all lives here. It's a it's like the clearinghouse for all the inside stuff that's going to make us better agents. Todd, you've seen him speak. He's like a world-class coach. He is so good. And so you listen to him talk here for five minutes and your day is going to be better. Keith is a world-class coach. Shannon is too. So lots of great stuff. Please be looking at this inside track. There is, and there, there are announcements on here too that are really important. New people to the office and what they've done are Derek, this all the all the weekly closings in here that that he talks about on Friday. He puts all of that information in here, so it's a really good page. I usually wait till I go home at night, and then I can go through and really really key in on it and, and look at it. But there's all kinds of information for you in here. Okay. And the next one is the Coldwell Banker Gen Blue.
and a lot of you were already members of Coldwell Banker Jan Blue. A few of you weren't, and I signed you up to that. Right now, it's all about Jan Blue, and they're giving information. They're asking questions about where they can stay. There's all kinds of information in here. Um, when it's off season, there's still a lot of activity in here. People from different areas asking who they can refer to and, and all kinds of things. It's a worldwide group of people and it's once again, it's a closed group so nobody else can see it but those who are invited to, to join it. So there's a lot of information right now. If you're going to go to to the Gen Blue conference, how many are going? Good. You've got a few. Good. Um, it'll give you a lot of information about what the different classes are, who the speakers are, who the entertainers are. It, it's a really great group of information for you. And, and Lynette, yeah. there's a lot of Mesoamerican history down in the Las Vegas area, so you should love it. I'm telling you, Lynette. Right. <laughs> so... On your signature blocks that I sent to everybody yesterday, if you want to have your personal logos on the, those, get them to me. If you want your team, I know Gary and I put his team lo, uh, motto on there. If you want that on all of the rest of the team, Gary, let me know. If you want to get me the names of your team members, I can set up a team in IQ office for you. So we'll get you going. Um, if there's anything wrong with your signature blocks, we had some email addresses that have changed that type of thing. Get them back to me. It doesn't take me any time at all to change them, okay? So, do we have questions? I will say that, uh, Margaret, when you sent me my, uh, my signature, I replied back on, I think it was like three things I'd like to see differently. And I swear, I had it less than five minutes. I was. I was shocked. So, so, so good <laughs> yeah, job. Yeah, it doesn't take, it's really, really quick to make the changes. So it's really easy for me. And it, I want everybody to be perfectly happy with them. Once we get the logo changed, if we change the logo to look like our logo, I'll go through every one of those and change them again. So they all have that new logo on them. Okay. So, other questions? Can I ask okay. something about Facebook, Margaret? Pardon? Can I ask something? You can um, stop sharing. Sure. Uh, I want to ask a general Facebook question. Uh, we're not going to take the next half hour, so we'll let you go here. Uh, it's been awesome. But um, do most of you know that your Facebook personal page is one thing, and then by and large you need a business page as well on which to conduct real estate. Like Facebook is really getting um, – kind of picky about doing business on your personal page. So in an upcoming training, and I'm not sure if it's next week, but uh, it's, it's on the horizon. We're going to talk about Facebook business pages and how you can use those very differently than your personal page. So since Margaret was showing Facebook pages, I just want to put that little um, drop in the bucket and you can start, you can look into it. Maybe you have already got your own business page. Great. But we're going to be talking about that. So you can have a business page where you can do real estate as well as your personal page and keep those two things a little bit, a little bit different. So that will be on the horizon. Margaret, did you have anything else uh, beyond those pages there that in the signatures? Um, on the signatures, it, they're all out. If you didn't receive one, I need to know that. Um, let's go back to Facebook. If, if I haven't friended you, Maybe I can't find you, or maybe there are so many people with your name that I'm not sure which one you are. Um, or I've sent probably 13 or 14 people have not responded to me yet, so I haven't signed them up for any of these closed groups. I'd love to get everybody signed up so everybody can participate. So if you haven't received something from me, please friend me. It's under Margaret. Eggleston is my maiden name, Lang, and it's a picture of my dog with my grandson laying on top of him. So, true love. True love. Excellent. And I get to go to Portland and see them in a month, so that's pretty awesome. Good, good. Um, excellent. Okay, so um, 
that was some, hopefully that wasn't overwhelming. It was a little bit more information than actual training, which I hope is useful. Um, any general questions right now about any of this transitional stuff that uh, Gary, Gary and Tori and Beverly have not, that haven't come up yet or what? Like you've got me and Margaret right now, anything that you're wanting to know, and I don't have all the answers, but I want to make sure your questions can be answered. You're muted. There you go. So we've had some questions on the Kingston Lane website. Good, um, good, good, good. So do you, I thought I saw a video talking about it. Did you do a video um, last week or sometime? Yeah? yeah. I showed it to Bobby. So should we, um, I'll search for that one and send it out again, or what do you, what do you suggest so they can get some more guidance on that? We're going to the Facebook closed group for Stan, for Kingston Lane. Good, 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 good. Go ahead and mute yourself. Okay, great questions. I'm so glad it came up because it seems like there's been a little bit of static with uh, Twin Falls agents, not your fault, trying to get into Kingston Lane. Okay, let me try and be really clear here. Kingston Lane is this group over here and they do awesome stuff. They're like the smartest uh, Facebook lead gen group I've ever seen. In fact, a guy coaching Bozeman just spent two hundred and fifty dollars on a uh, on a four part Kingston Lane thing, and he got seventy nine leads out of it. You got seventy nine people that clicked on whatever Kingston Lane put out there to say, "Oh, I want more information about that." Usually, you spend two hundred fifty bucks, and you get maybe one or two. He got seventy nine, so now he's like, "Oh my God, what do I do? How do I how do I handle this?" So we're coming up with strategies. So. You're going to get a lot of activity if you use Kingston Lane, but it is a not, it's not our product. It lives over there, over there being Orange County and Irvine or something like that, Orange County. Um, and so we are just in sort of partnership. Okay, so if you're struggling to get your login, because that's where the static has been with some folks, um, you can email me or Margaret, but really everything about Kingston Lane is Kingston Lane. Margaret and I have almost no, we have no control over how any of that interface happens. Um, you can certainly CC us, but Evan at KingstonLane.com is your go-to guy. He's super responsive. He starts every email with, hey, how's it? Which is bizarre, I've never seen it before, but that's how, that's how you know it's him. So if, you, if you've tried it and you're like, the login screen isn't letting me in, certainly contact Margaret and me, but Evan at KingstonLane.com, Beverly, I see you writing that down, I think, is the, is the person that helps with all of that. We're just the conduit. We don't have any control over any of that. So it's a separate individual marketing thing where you have to be equipped to handle leads or don't do it. So if your system is not tight, if you are scattered and don't have the time, don't do a Kingston lead right now, a Kingston Lane thing right now because you will get leads and it's a little bit overwhelming, okay? Evan at KingstonLane.com is your go-to guy. Um, it's really, it's, it's a very fascinating product. The two trainings that Beverly is talking about, they're both hour long trainings, but they're by the Kingston Lane folks who are awesome, way more informative, way more uh, enjoyable to listen to than some guy in Sun Valley. And so I'll put those two links in this video recording. Watch them just because they're great. Don't even worry about the Kingston Lane stuff. What Sharon knows and thinks about real estate will turn you around three, four times. He is unbelievable. So you'll get those links. Watch them if you want. Spend some money if you want. Basically, and Beverly and Tori and Gary, I think this sounds right. Basically, Kingston Lane is a really awesome dance club. We have bought the cover charge so you can go in and dance. Boom, boom. But what we have not done is buy any of your drinks or any of the stuff in there. Once you're in the club, then you have to buy your own stuff. But we got you entrance into the club, which would have cost you, I don't know if it was 79 or $109 for the year. Is it a lot? Is it a little, It's an awesome club. That's all I'm going to tell you. And if you go in there and dance and drink a little, you're going to be like, wow, this place is killer. So. We've had several agents buy, um, what, what did you guys buy? Seller leads. Seller leads. Several agents have, and they've gotten some leads, quite a few. So they're 
they're working, they're buying drinks. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> and getting some. I'm done. Oh, oh, wow. And getting some reward. I will say this every single time though. Anything you do online to get leads, make sure it's only 10 to 20% max uh, of, of the time and the money you're spending. Um, this very same guy in Bozeman who got 79 leads from Kingston Lane for $250, he also spent two hours on the phone with his SOI, made 30 calls, and he got seven people who are ready to do something. And he spent this much on that. And he's got seven people who already know and trust him and are ready to think about buying or selling because he did two hours of that for this much money. And he spent $250 and he's got 79 people who don't know him from Nick Jacobs to Gary, right? And so you know how much work those online leads are. Not saying don't do it. I'm saying prioritize and keep it in proportion. Kingston Lane's awesome, but it's not a silver bullet. The silver bullet is in your black book or whatever you're using these days. That sound okay? I don't know, I'm being harsh. <laughs> Gary's forming something. No, I was just gonna say that the uh, Kingston Lean, uh, Lane leads, um, the agents that have bought those are uh, one, they're, they're newer agents, because they're, they're trying to get some traction, you know, dealing, they don't have a big long list or a big black book of SOI and, PC, so they've got to go. They got they're they're leveraging something else just to start building their pipeline. So, yep, excellent. So, if you're a new agent, and then I think we can let you let you go here, unless Margaret, yeah, or Tori, you have anything else. If you're a new agent, do the Kingston Lane. But then, as soon as you're done, call Kitty, call Victoria, call Tad, call someone, and say, hey, over the President's Weekend Day weekend, can I sit um, 4105 Hidden Hidden Lane? Can I hold it open two or three times? That's where you're going to build your business too, is sitting open homes and having people walk in, say, God, this is great. And you say, are you working with anyone? Uh, no, I'm just looking. Well, hi, here's my card. Here's what I do. I'd love to be the agent that helps you find your, your dream home in Twin Falls. All of a sudden, your SOI is going like this because you're sitting open houses. So find that balance, but don't put all your time or energy into the online stuff because it's the real people walking in and out of open homes and in your SOI, as small as it might be, that are going to do the deals for you. Um, and that's all I got to say. Uh, that's all. That's what I've seen. Okay. Um, Gary, uh, Tori, uh, Beverly, anything we want to um, tie this up with before I make my final? I don't think I have anything. No? Okay. Uh, excellent. So tomorrow's fan club. Remember, every Friday from 11 to 12, we do an hour long who knows what. And Beverly, I know you asked, well, what are these going to be about? And I, I can't always tell you what a fan club or a mastermind is going to be about. Uh, but I usually they're of some uh, use. Tomorrow is actually we're going to talk about Instagram and Facebook. Um, unless something amazing happens tonight that we have to talk about tomorrow. But that's what we're going to do, do tomorrow on, on fan club. Make sure that you've got an Instagram that's useful. Make sure your Facebook business page is um, functional and you know how to boost and all that kind of stuff. So love for you to tune in at 11 tomorrow. It's recorded and I'll send it out. So you can always uh, see it later, but that's what tomorrow's fan club is. Okay. Eric, before yeah. you go, just so, I mean, cause we're all new to this so that we can prioritize and not be sitting in front of our computers all day. We've got mastermind fan club and then whatever this is. Yeah. Is whatever it's, this is the most important thing that we should prioritize? Um, Probably, yes. <laughs> Probably, yes. Um, let's call this a training. We're doing a Thursday training, TT, Thursday training at 1.30. The fan club is for, and this is only for you guys, right? The fan club is for everybody. And it's just meant to give you, If you're right, don't sit all day. Like I tell my agents, I hope you miss every single training and every single meeting that we've ever arranged because you're out with a client. Miss everything, right? And go do real estate. Totally fine with me. But if you're wanting some insights, if you're wanting to more know-how, we've got these things. So this is most important. I'd say the mastermind that we I will invite you to on Tuesday from 2 to 3, which will be run by our Vail MD, is probably second most important because she's awesome. And then the fan club, I hate saying this, but it's probably third on the list of most important because it's just stuff that, you know, you can use. 
but is not going to jumpstart your business tomorrow. I think maybe some of the stuff that uh, Shawnee talked about and Margaret talked about and I talked about today is probably more applicable to your immediate business than anything I'll do on fan club for the most part. Okay. Okay. So now that I've just um, said that my show is the least important, I'm going to say goodbye. And thanks for that, Lynette. Really appreciate the, the low blow there. My team is yeah. now <laughs> like skiers going downhill. That's fine with me. Hey, I, I hope you're getting something out of this. If you have thoughts about, like, we need to know this, make sure Tori and Beverly and Gary know that so that we can adjust these trainings um, as necessary because we want to be responsive to what you need and not just shove things down your throat like uh, Shawnee tends to do. Oh, sorry, Shawnee's back. Like hey I now I'm back. Okay. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate all of your patience and your attention. Have a great Thursday afternoon, okay? Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.